Share your knowledge, share your things. This, as you probably guessed already, is a ukulele. Uh, it's been bought for my daughter. And the challenge this week is, how do you fix a strap pin to the end of a ukulele? Well, why would you want to? Well, the point is you don't always have a choice, do you? Because you buy things from YouTube, or via, um, shall we say, via looking at um, uh, little advertorials on YouTube, and little uh, unboxing things that people do, which are all a little bit bizarre. I can't really get my head around those, but they can be useful sometimes. Anyway, I'm not going to do an unboxing video, because that just isn't me at all. But what I am going to do is show you not to be scared of a new instrument, just because it's new, shiny, and you know you need to do something which involves drilling a hole in it. Don't be scared. If you don't know something, you have to ask how to do it. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm going to show you how to do now. So here we are, brand new, lovely little ukulele. I think this is a concert size one, by the way. I'm big, so against me, you get sort of the idea. This is like a standard ukulele. And uh, not a cheap one, but not, not a massively expensive one either. First thing is, what are we going to do in the work area to, uh, to keep our new shiny ukulele safe? Well, I bought a stand, look. Aha! Easy. Easy. Very, very important to um, look after things. All right? Just because you're in a workshop situation, you don't have to be rough with it, you don't have to know what you're doing. Why would you know what you're doing? You've never done this before. Keep an area nice, soft, safe, clean. There you go. I've got another um, dust sheet down here, which I want to use on the back to support the uh, machine head. So, I'm just going to lay the ukulele down here. Wouldn't it be nice if when you bought things and you found exactly the right thing, they came with everything you wanted? This little thing, I forgot exactly what it's called. But basically, it's a button to which you attach a... Um, a standard strap and it needs to go there's a little line down here where the veneers meet and it needs to go roughly central there just like that easy why couldn't it come like that because it didn't that's why so I could sort of say well just get on with it and you'll be alright and you know we'll see if we can find one of these little straps that you know attach here and we may buy one we may not oh by the way I don't know how to tune it maybe you could learn that no in a situation like this, again, you're giving a, a, an instrument to um, a child. In this case, the child does have a reasonably good idea how to play, but very often they don't. And it might be all they've dreamt about doing. So, do the research. Tune it. I only know about five chords on a ukulele, as you can probably tell, which is why I did that little, that little skit at the beginning. Tune it. Get it ready for them. Buy the little thing that goes here that supports that. You can also use... They use um, uh, these sort of uh, string things as well, or leather bits that tie around on the end there too. But this is a nice one. This is you know, this, it's about two pounds as, a, as an addition on um, uh, via uh, Mr. Friendly, um, I believe uh, Amazon. Amazon, I think I got that from. Uh, and um, this little bit on the end here too, which basically turns this into an instrument that you can hang in the right place, learn to play in the right place, it's always always going to be there, it's going to be nicely tuned for the first time she picks it up. So when she does start learning chords, she'll be more inclined to, uh, to carry on playing, which, which is lovely, isn't it? So that's the intention, very simple. But you'd be a little bit scared, wouldn't you? Because I'm asking you to take a screw, put it through this thing here, and screw it into the end there. So you could just grab a screwdriver and you could go, all right, there we go there. And, and that will push out of the way. This will probably get scratched as you're pushing it. Uh, you'll probably slip and dig the screwdriver into the side of the wood and ruin it. Well, look, simple. Just approach things the right way. Number one, think about everything. Where does this button need to be? We've got a nice soft area here, so I won't put the screw on there, I don't want to accidentally rest that on the screw. Keep that soft. We know where it needs to be. It needs to be in the middle of the, um, of the ukulele, and it needs to be on that line too. So, we could just put a pen mark where it needs to be. There's a little line here, and I can judge the centre of something approximately, I'm pretty good at that. 
But if you're not confident about that, don't worry. Get a little bit of, uh, of uh, low-tack tape. This is frog tape, which I, I've used for some very um, specialist things in the past. I generally would use ordinary masking tape. But because this is brand new and there's lacquer on there, I don't want to take the lacquer off. So it was worth just paying an extra couple of quid for that. I'm going to put that bit of frog tape across here. I'm then going to rest it this way round. I'm going to get my tape measure out. I'm going to mark the middle. It's seven centimetres, so I'm looking at three and a half centimetres there. Good. So, three and a half centimetres from the bottom. I shall use a better pen. I shall use a Sharpie there, just to get that mark. So, down, up. Put that on the bottom approximately. Look, I'm fiddling around here. Oh, another thing. Another thing. So there's me intending to do videos about tool safety. And I thought the first thing I did to myself this morning was, look, look, I'm not giving you the bird there. Look, it's, um, it's a plaster. Because I reached into my toolbox and accidentally caught my finger on the plane as I pulled it out. Now, I very rarely do that. But it doesn't matter. If you cut yourself, cut yourself. You deal with it. You might be interested. Anyway, so, there, I've made my little mark. That's it. My little mark. There is actually a line down the veneer here. You might be able to see it if I hold it up for you to see. Can you see that? Now I have to put a screw in there. It's scared. No need to be scared. No need to be scared at all. Basically, make sure you're using a correct pilot hole. So you're going to need to have a drill to drill a pilot hole. How do you know if it's the correct drill for the job? It's easy. What you do is you hold up the screw that you've got to put in, you hold the drill up to it, in front of it, so screw behind, drill in front, that's the flat end of the drill, by the way, flat like this, and you look up at the light, and if you can see the uh, little bits of screw thread either side, I shall come closer, if you can see the little bits of the screw thread, can you just see them poking over either side of the shank there? Then you know you've got the correct drill for the bit. For the job rather, should I say. So, not absolutely certain, well, this is exactly the same drill bit in, in, my, in my power drill here. Uh, so, we drill a little hole and we test it. This is a waste piece of wood. I don't want to drill into that nice new um, ukulele at the moment. Because I'm not absolutely certain about this. So, drill a hole. That's one I drilled earlier, look. But I'm going to drill it on the other side to pretend I didn't do that. Notice I'm holding this flat down, long way away. Nice and easy. No, no pressure on letting the drill do the work. Faster speed for drills. Never the slower speed. Faster speed drills, never. I mean, you can use the slower speed, speed if it's very, very uh, delicate. But faster speed, fine for drilling holes. So, I'll put that down again, again, to the side, keep your work area neat, it helps a lot. I want to test now that this screw is, is right for here, so I need the right screwdriver for the job. Should I put it in with a power screwdriver? No, why not? Basically, because you have one screw that's been delivered with this nice, shiny screw, exactly the right size for this job. Fits in there, looks beautiful. Look, look how beautiful that looks. Now imagine how horrible that would look if you had to stick some horrible drywall screw or something because this got broken or the head got mashed up because you weren't concentrating. Mm -hmm. So, very important, get it right first time. So think, you don't have to rush, you don't know, you ask. You do the job slowly in your own time. In order to put a screw in here, you need to have the right screwdriver for the job. You know, oh yeah, that, that turns it, but... Will it support it on the end? No. This is a, a proper little potty drive one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it fits nicely. Oh, it's got good bite. Yeah, I could use that one. Shall I use that one? No. Why? See the angle that that's falling out there? That means that the, the screwdriver isn't perfectly um, locked into the uh, potty drive head. This one. Shall I try this one? Well, third time lucky. Try and hold my hand still. All right, it will fall off the end of this, of course it will, if I do that. Oh, actually it's pretty good. Um, the 
better the fit of the screwdriver, the less likely you are to damage the screw. And the better torque you have in order to put it in. When you're putting a screw into something which you are really cautious about, if it's in the garden and you're just doing a garden frame or something, it doesn't matter if you slip a bit, except you could hurt yourself, you know, plaster on finger. Um, but if you're doing a delicate job and you want to do it right first time, vitally important that you get the tool right. That's a really nice fit in there. So I'm going to hold that neatly, just with my finger on there, and I'm going to test it in this test hole and see how that bites, if that bites okay. Now notice I'm just twisting that with my fingers there. Now look, that was to get it started. Because I've got a pilot hole, I've got it started. What's the bit that you slip on always when you try and get it started? Oh, I just put this screw in it. Oh, oh I just put this... And you slip. And because you're putting pressure on something, you end up pushing it through, i.e. damaging either what you're working on or, even worse, yourself. So, this pilot hole is spot on. It's very easy. Now note, this is my work. I'm holding it. Generally speaking, your workpiece would be either clamped or held firmly to a bench. Your palm goes on the top of the screwdriver. And all you're doing is you just ni nice neat pressure down with your palm and you're just twisting with your fingers, just gently like that. Keeping the pressure on with your palm all the time so your screwdriver doesn't slip. Now I'm happy with that. That's, the thread is biting beautifully, but it's not hard to put in. It's not threatening to uh, pull out of the thread or damage the screw. The torque, if you like, to use the technical term, seems just about right for the job. Okay, so... I'm happy with the size of that drill bit. I showed you how that worked. I can show you again later in terms of seeing the threads either side. So, if this drill bit was slightly too small, what would happen is you'd see more thread, you'd see loads of thread either side of that. But, because the drill bit that you were using, the, uh, the pilot drill as that's called, would be smaller than the core material of the screw, it means you're forcing that, it's, it's like forcing an oversized dowel into a smaller hole. It's really difficult, and there's no point, because the only thing that does the work on a screw is the thread. So your pilot hole should be exactly the same size as the core of the, of the screw that you're using. If not, fractionally larger. When I say fractionally larger, you still need to be able to see the threads either side of that. And as I say, if you're not at all sure, always try it on a spare piece of wood, because if you do that, um, you've not risked anything. So here we go. We're, we're marked, we're keeping everything off the nice, our nice work area. And um, here's our lovely ukulele. What are we going to do with it? I'm just going to go for it. I know this is right. I know this is in the right place. I can hold this down quite firmly on here, right-handed or left-handed. Actually, I'm right-handed. Um, the great thing about this drill that I'm using is that I can more or less just have it flat on the work area, like that. Not quite, can you see, because if I'm lining up to this little hole there, it means I'm having to put it up. So look, I'm make things easy for myself. Why, why make it complicated? Why, why force? Why did find another piece of wood or, or, or something, or a tray, or a book, anything, that brings it up to about the right level. Oh, look at that. Look, that's almost spot on. Right down the line here, um, I could, if I wanted to, use something called a braddle. Now, a braddle, there's different types, basically looks like a teeny tiny little screwdriver, and they're very sharp, and you can like push them in like a point and give something a little turn to start a screw. There's absolutely no point here. Absolutely no point. This is firm down on the table. It's not going to go anywhere. We have to hold on to it well. Line it up. You've got your bit of tape to protect. Once you get to a certain stage, you can hold that down. Be confident. Look. Be confident. Because if you're not confident at this stage, don't go ahead and make yourself a cup of tea. Think about it a little bit longer. Don't think about it all day. But think about it a little bit longer. I'm confident, okay? So, testing my thing, testing my drills working fine, it's on a fast speed. I'm going to hold the work down, and I'm going to keep everything. I'm just going to guide here with my thumb. Get in the right place. Um, I know on any guitar or, or um, uh, 
instrument with this shape that there is a piece of wood that goes all the way down exactly on that line. If you're not sure, you can shine a torch in this end, look all the way down and you will see that piece of wood. That's how I'm confident that this is the correct place to put it. And I have checked this one earlier and it is there. So, I'm just going to guide nicely. I'm going to rest, before I turn, I'm going to rest right on the point here. And here we go. All the way through and start and out. I was using no push pressure at all. If your drill bit isn't sharp, don't use it. You would have known that because you would have tried it on your test bit of wood, so you would have known. Basically, I've now done the job. I just need to put the screw in needle. Put everything to the side here. I can get rid of that. Remove your low tack tape. Very carefully. Look, cardinal sin. I put that over there. I shouldn't have done that. Put that away in my toolbox because I want to keep my work area clean because this is the valuable thing in my workshop. This is. Obviously my tools are very valuable to me. But this is what I'm working on. This could be a Fabergé air, crown jewels, whatever. I mean, yes, I regularly have those things in my workshop. Um, look after it. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a rush. It doesn't matter. Take your time. That's the right thing to do. Little trick when you're putting tape away. You probably do this anyway. Just fold over the last bit like that. And then it's always easy to find the end whenever you need it. Uh, this is my workshop, so I can throw my rubbish down there because I'm allowed to. At home, you have your own rules. So, I'm now going to screw the button into the end of the ukulele. I know for a fact that this is the correct hole because I've already tested it. I also know that this is the correct screwdriver. Again, you don't want to be forcing, guessing that it's going to go in. How many times have you seen people with a power screwdriver with a screwdriver ending like this, with a screw in the end going, I just want to get it in there, pop, and it moves off to the side because it misses causing damage to the item, causing damage potentially to yourself, and breaking drills and things. If you're doing it like that, you're doing it wrong. Pilot holes, using a pilot hole, sharp set of drills, really useful thing to have, always the way to go. I know for a fact that this screwdriver really bites nicely into this screw, really nicely, okay? So much so that I can actually be quite confident to do that until it drops. No, that's not bad at all. But still, I'm not going to go at it like this, because I don't want to slip. There's no point. So, what I'm going to do is, with the first couple of threads, just go by hand. Just, just turn it, because I know it's about right. Just turn it by hand until it's started. Just starts to bite. There you go. Just started to bite. Now, knowing I can put delicate pressure and that this is exactly the right screwdriver for the job, notice I'm balancing here. Just turning that very, very gently, very gently. It's not a race at all. This is when it goes ping and breaks to pieces, right? This is absolutely a beautiful bite. Probably a fraction tighter than I'd like. Just a fraction. But I'm going with it. I've made my decision. I could pull it out now, I could do a different, slightly different job. Put a slightly larger screw hole in there. If, it, if I was at all unsure, I know that this won't pop because there's a solid piece of wood down the back. But if you were at all unsure about that, you'd take that out and put a fractionally larger drill. Even if you had to buy a new drill, like that, and I think that was probably a 3mm. If you had to go to your local DIY shop and buy a 3.2mm drill. It's worth doing. We're talking about pennies. And this is something that you will keep and be used forever. So it's really worth doing. And believe me, you will use that drill again one day. Um, so, I'm holding this nice and firmly down. Um, with a screw head, you'll find that you've got a crisscross. And if you want to keep it really neat on something like this, you'd either have it perfectly crossed here or on, a, on an angle. Now, I've got that tight at the moment. I don't want to overdo it. But if I just bring that round just now, you see... I can feel that to do any more there is going to be is over tightening so I can slip on the screw. So rather than risk damage the screw head there, I'm going to say, look, I'm going to be happy with severe progress today and not perfection. That's not exactly on an X. 
Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter at all. That, my friends, today is a done job. All I need to do now is attach the strap and off we go. So remember, if you don't ask, you won't find out. And remember, if you have the knowledge, share the knowledge. Thank you very much. Share your knowledge, share your feelings.